Okay, there we go. Well, good afternoon. I'm so glad to have Erica and Maddie on with me today. Uh, this is our video podcast, if you will, entitled, I'm Graduating, Now What? And this is our installment number one. And we're going to talk a little bit today about making that transition off to college. Both Maddie and Erica are in their third year in school, so they have a lot of experience under their belt now. And we want to hear from them on a few specific questions about making that transition. So we're just going to have a little discussion today for a few minutes and uh, see where it takes us. So I'm going to throw out the first question and you guys can answer. And what was your biggest surprise? Do, sort of including what you didn't expect, good or bad? Well, for me, my biggest surprise was that you can just do things. Like you want to go down to the Wawa and buy something, drag a friend along, you can just go walk. You don't have to like ask, raise your hand, ask permission. Can I go do this thing? You, it, you get that chance to have like a lot more independence than in high school. And even in classes, you're in a big lecture hall. You just, you have to go to the bathroom. You just go and come back. So it's really nice to be able to feel that. Sort of treated like an adult. Maddie, what was your biggest surprise? For me, it would probably be um, how easy it was to get involved and just to take advantage of opportunities. Um, coming to college and just kind of living by myself and having that new experience, uh, it was just so new to me and I was very overwhelmed at first, uh, but I soon realized that that was so good. There's just so much freedom that I could just kind of go out and be involved, um, find things that were of interest to me and just kind of form that community. Um, so definitely just kind of being able to have that new sense of freedom and figuring out what to do with it. Okay. Was there any bad surprise? Was there anything that surprised you that wasn't good? Oh, that's good. Nothing comes immediate to mind, so that's that seems like it might be okay. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so time management is going to be a big deal. Moving from being in a high school class where you are in class all day, straight, maybe you have study hall, maybe you have a little time at lunch, but otherwise you are nonstop. So you all of a sudden you have open gaps in your schedule, right? You might have a whole afternoon or big blocks of time in the middle of the day. So how do you stay motivated and manage your time and not get too wrapped up in, oh, I have all this free time and maybe goofing off too much. How do you, how do you do that? For me, it was a little difficult at first, just trying to find that good balance um, just between schoolwork and getting involved and hanging out with my roommate and everything like that. Um, so it's definitely, it's definitely a trial and error kind of seeing like um, just getting used to the college uh, coursework and seeing how long everything's going to take. Um, so the first couple of weeks, I was mostly just focused on like feeling everything out, seeing the rigor of the classes and the coursework and how much would really be determined of me. Um, so then going forth, it was kind of a little bit easier to just be like, okay, I need to set aside this certain amount of time for classes. So just have to focus on those during the day. Um, and then if I get everything done, I'll have a little bit more free time that I can kind of just like play around with um, and see what else I can fit into my schedule without overwhelming myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me, it's definitely been learning what times I am productive because I know I'm not getting anything done after nine o'clock at night. So I make sure to get things done during the day. And I try really hard to get everything done before dinner, but after dinner is my time. But, you know, things happen. Sometimes it's a little more work, but it's definitely that finding when you're going to be productive. Um, if, there, if I have like an hour between classes, I find that's a good time to be productive because it's not enough time to get into anything, but it's enough time to get a little work done. And... Another thing I found very helpful are lists. I know some people have planners and whatever. I found lists. You can just 
cross it off. I've done that thing. It feels good to cross things off. Yeah. So um, a follow-up question for you on that time. You were talking about like just having like an hour between classes and what do you do with that? So do you find, did you go back to your dorm? Did you just find a place to hang out for a little bit? What did travel time between things ever get in the way? There were definitely some semesters where I had that hour where I would like go to the next building and find somewhere to do a little work. Other times I would go back to my dorm depending on which building it was in. Because mm -hmm. there have been times where I've had classes that are pretty far. So the travel time does factor in a little more. Mm -hmm. so, so finding that place on campus where you can be productive, use those um, minutes and hours wisely in between things. That makes sense, makes sense. So you have a little bit of free time. So you have an opportunity to meet some other people. Uh, how do you recommend, how, you, how do you do that? How do you go to the school that maybe you're the only person from your class at, or maybe there's just a few, how do you meet these people? Well, that one's pretty easy. You just join things. I know every school has like hundreds of organizations and join clubs, put at the activities fair or whatever they do, put your name, put your email down on a whole bunch of club lists. If you never go, that's fine. If you go to one meeting, you might meet someone. So like put your name out there. Okay, so it's okay to just sign up for a bunch of stuff and just try it out. Oh yeah. Okay. For me, I would definitely say a little bit of the same thing. Um, just definitely getting involved, taking advantage of everything, because that's a great way to meet a whole scope of different people um, that you might not have met before if you didn't just try out new things. Um, and also in doing that, just getting outside of your comfort zone, um, doing something you might not have thought you would enjoy uh, prior to coming to college, but it's really just all um, trying new experiences because they're a really good way to meet people who might be very similar or very different to you. And that's one of the like great parts of college is that you can just meet so many people that might be different from you, but you might figure out that you have um, so many things in common that you might not have realized before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. And just because you signed up for something doesn't mean that you're making some commitment for the whole school year or the whole semester. No, not at all. I remember going to um, the student organization night and just signing up for so many things, seeing if they'd be of interest to me, um, just going to a couple different meetings, and then there's really no, no commitment if you don't want to. Okay. All right. That takes a little bit of the pressure off, doesn't it? It yeah. definitely does. Yeah. And would you say get involved early? As soon as you get there, find these activities to, to connect with. Yeah. Usually the like uh, organization fair is really early on during orientation or something. So, and the first few weeks clubs will be doing like intro meetings, just please come learn what we're all about. And even if that's the only meeting you go to, you'll still meet some new people. Mm -hmm. Very good. So the, all those um, faces, you start to have some faces you recognize in the crowd after all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. So all these people you're gonna meet, how have you managed not to get drawn into all the stuff that parents fear about kids going off to college? Will they get in with the wrong crowd? Will they meet people who, I don't know, just take them down the wrong path? What do you do to kind of steer your way on that? Uh, for me, it would definitely be um, finding a friend group that I really clicked with and that had the same um, kind of values and similarities that I did. Um, so meeting them was really helpful to kind of just know that we could all be doing something together. Um, and just like having those people that I clicked with really helped to, to make me feel comforted and to know that we were just that we all felt safe and secure together. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, in addition to that, I would say definitely like find that organization that feels like home to you, like whether it be like band or knitting club or something like that, 
because you'll have, you'll be able to stay busy with those people. And I know there's always so many events going on on campus. So staying busy is just another way. There's go to events, you're gonna have homework. Like you'll have, you'll be able to fill all your free time. So you won't have time to get in trouble. <laughs> That's very good. To stay, stay busy, you'll stay out of trouble. That sounds good. That sounds real good. So um, is there anything you would have done differently in your freshman year now that you look back on it? You have a couple of years with that in the rear view mirror. Is there anything you would have done differently? I would have joined campus ministries. I didn't get involved until my sophomore year and I've met so many great people and I really wish I had gotten involved earlier. And for me, one thing that I would have done differently um, was really um, considered my major more than I did um, going into college, I just had this idea that I wanted to be a certain major, um, and after taking um, a bunch of classes for it, I realized that it wasn't really for me, um, so I wish I would have experienced or experimented with more classes first um, so, that, so that I was able to um, just learn all the, different, all the different classes and just see what they were about to kind of be able to figure things out from there instead of just following one path that I had originally decided and then going with it. Okay. Okay. But that's good news in what you're saying. So if you have this idea going into school, it doesn't mean that you have to stay with it if it turns out it's not a good fit. Yeah, not at all. Because um, I was in my sophomore year um, and realized that I just wasn't happy with my major. So then I just made the switch and now I've been taking my new major classes and I absolutely love it. So making that switch was the best decision I could have made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So giving yourself those experiences, those broad experiences, like even with the activity groups, like getting into things that you may not have even considered just to broaden your perspective a little might, might steer you in a totally different direction. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That's really good. Yeah. So how do you stay, do you stay connected with your friends from home or your family at home, your church at home? Is there, what are the tricks for doing that? Now, technology helps a lot these days. There's so lots of ways to stay. Is that what you use or is there anything else? Uh, for me, the technology definitely is a helpful part of that. Um, I think at first it was kind of, it was a little bit difficult to stay in contact with everyone from home just because I was, I don't want to say overwhelmed, but just because I was getting so acclimated to everything at college that I, was, I wasn't focusing as much on home. Um, but then I think something that really helped was kind of having a set aside time to either like call or FaceTime my family and stay in touch with them, see what they were doing. Um, and just finding that balance between still like having those relationships that you had before and then still being able to form new relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another thing I found to be fun is with a couple friends, I, we've written letters back and forth because it's so much fun to open your mailbox and actually have a letter there. Um, so that's been really nice. And it's only a couple of people and it's like a month between letters because we get busy, but it's a good way to just keep in touch. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. Yeah, there's nothing better than having a real letter in your mailbox other than like a bill or junk mail, <laughs> for sure. So considering all of that, what advice would you give a student who is just starting off at school, at a college or university. Sort of that general overall advice would you give them? Get involved and talk to your professors. Like, that's something I guess I would also say I wish I had done a little more freshman year. Because um, your professors are there to help and your TAs, talk to your TAs too. Because if you're super intimidated by your professors, you shouldn't be, but if you are, your TAs are just stressed out grad students. They're a little more relatable. So <laughs> just talk to your TAs too. Okay. I would definitely agree with that. Um, forming relationships with some of my professors has been extremely beneficial. And I know that I can go to them if I'm having any problems with just scheduling or any personal problems. There's some professors that I'm extremely close with now um, just because I had 
um, just gotten to know them better um, during that class or after it was over. So I, um, I'd say definitely having close relationships with your professors is definitely beneficial. Um, also just taking advantage of um, all the resources that there are. Um, there's so many different ways um, just that organizations and clubs offer their services to students and there's so many opportunities that people don't take advantage of. Um, so definitely just learning all about the organizations, what they do to help students, and then just learning more about how those can benefit you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good advice. Good advice. And that does make me think of, of one last question. You're talking about these relationships with the professors. It's a very different kind of relationship than your teachers in like high school, right? Because you actually do you you share similar interests, especially once you get into your major professors, right? And so those, um, did it feel strange to like actually go to a professor and start talking to them and sort of maybe a different way than you would have in high school? It definitely is a transition at first, um, especially at the beginning of college, like my freshman year, I was taking a lot of gen ed, so they were mostly bigger classes. Um, so I was very overwhelmed at trying to introduce myself to my professor and just get to know them. Um, but I'm very glad that I did for many of the classes just because it meant that I was able to talk to them on a more personal level that they knew who I, um, who I was. Um, so just if I was having any issues with anything, I know that I could count on them to help me out because they know they knew who I was it wasn't just that I was a random student in a class of like 200 people mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then later on when I got more into my major classes um, and the professors all have the same interests that makes it so much easier again just to get to know them better mm -hmm. that's great that's great well I think you guys have made the transition quite nicely seems like you're doing very well and so pleased to get to hear from you and your experiences um, and that you could share that with the students that are coming up behind you. So I want to thank you for this and um, best of luck through the rest of the school year. Thank you so much. Thank you.